Thumbnails. Okay, at this stage in the process, having thought through the idea and done some research, usually I have some ideas brewing in my head about how I'm going to approach the illustration from a visual point of view. So now it's time to start getting those ideas um, out of my head and onto the page. So purpose of thumbnails, really it's about finding that perfect story moment to convey your idea. Now that's not easy, it's really difficult. And for me, that's why thumbnailing is really useful because you, you can start with lots of small, rough, really quick sketches and it saves so much time. You can throw out loads of ideas in a short space of time, see what's working, see what isn't working while not wasting like time on details that just aren't important at this point. It also helps you to stumble across new ideas that you might not have come across, you know, just happy accidents. So for me, this stage is all about exploring three main big picture things. What is the story moment going to be? What's the point of view of the action, the conflict? What is the composition going to look like? The perspective, the placement of the characters, the set dressing, focal point, leading the eye into the image. And finally, what sort of lighting sources might work in the scene to increase the, the story moment, uh, the drama, the atmosphere and the mood. To sum that up, we're looking at the big picture design decisions. So that's generally what I'm thinking about at this stage of the process. I'm really not considering detail about who the characters are yet. Uh, other than a group of kids, a ghost or a monster. You know, I'm not going much deeper than that. But yeah, they are starting to form in my head, but when I'm drawing the thumbnails, I'm not really articulating that yet. I'm also not too bothered by the exact specifics of the set, uh, unless it's integral to the story. So I might hint at things like maybe pictures on a wall or carpet on the floor, but really that stuff will be thought out a bit more later once I've got the overall idea and composition established. So this is really about getting a strong foundation for the rest of the piece. All right, so this video has been sped up around eight times just for, you know, we, we don't have time to watch it in, in real time. And as I'm drawing these thumbnails, I'm thinking about lots of things simultaneously. So I'm trying to keep them as simple and as clear as possible. So whenever I work, I tend to go from general to specific. So this thumbnail stage is very general, big picture ideas, like we said. Thinking about composition, so you'll notice me try to think about the rule of thirds in an image. Thinking about the, you know, the balance between the kids and the ghost, how they're going to play out in the composition. Uh, I'm really not worried about doing good drawings right now, um, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, I'm just, I really just want to explore ideas as quickly as I can get them on the page. I'm also thinking about perspective. So you'll see me try to kind of, you know, throw in the perspective lines and get an idea of the, the scene. Quite cinematic. Uh, I, I quite like cinematic style illustration in the sense of, you know, there's a bit of depth going on and there's like a scene that you could step into. And I'm really just throwing ideas on the page and seeing what works. So some of these ideas have been in my head from the start and some of them are just kind of new. So I know I want to try one on the stairs, like I mentioned. Uh, I want to try one of them looking in the door. Uh, I also want to try them running away from this ghost character. And you'll see I'm also trying different variations on the same idea. So different versions of the stair different versions of those ideas. So really this is about finding solutions. The problem is convey the idea, um, a group of kids exploring that haunted manor and it's got to be dramatic. So how do I convey that idea? What is the solution to that? So this is why I consider this stage problem solving really. And I'm really setting the foundations for the rest of the process. So if I get this stage right, Everything else will kind of fall into place on top of it. If you've got that strong foundation, then it's like building a house. You've got a strong foundation, the rest of the house sits on top of it, right? I'm really not bothering about details. Just as much information as, or sorry, as little information as I can get away with. As long as I'm conveying the idea, right? 
conveying the composition, the camera angle, point of view of the characters. Also, I'm hinting at the lighting. You'll see me blocking in some tone and shade. So I'm using that to separate elements out, but also kind of start thinking about how's the scene going to be lit? And also thinking about the action of the characters. Where are these characters grouped? What is their general action? Not really specific actions, but more of a general as a, a general mass. So the kids are all this kind of general mass and they're all kind of acting like maybe huddled up together or are they separated out? Are they running away? Nothing too detailed, just the general idea. So you see, it's really quick to just come up with these different ideas, you know? As I said, it's been sped up eight times. Uh, so I'm guessing it maybe took about an hour or so to do this this page of thumbnails. So, you know, what's that? Maybe five minutes a thumbnail. Uh, I tend to draw one, move on, draw another one, move on. Maybe go back to one, elaborate on it, clarify it. It's just the way I like to work. And I think it works quite well for me. And I'm really, those reference images are really coming into play here because those swooping banisters and some of those reference photos, I'm starting to bring that in. Thinking how I can use that in my scene. I'm also bringing these reference photos in and drawing on top of them. So I've got this ready-made almost composition and I just need to add the characters in into that environment. Maybe tweak the background, maybe tweak the window shape, uh, the staircase. But it's a really quick way of getting an idea on, on the page just to draw over a photograph which has a nice composition that you like. The only thing I'd say is be careful about copying the image underneath. You want to create something new. You don't want to copy. You want to create something new from it. But using that as a foundation can really help. Basically, you're just focusing less on trying to figure out the background and you're focusing more on the story, the characters, uh, the, the action that's going on. So yeah, you can see these thumbnails are really, really loose. They're very rough. I'm not sure I would show these to a client. I don't know if I would do that. But for me, personally, they're clear enough that I can visualize a scene from them. And I know from these thumbnails if something's working or not. I can tell if it, the scene is working, the composition and the the action and the drama is all coming together. Hopefully you, the viewer, can see what's going on too. But yeah, I probably wouldn't share these with a client. I would probably clarify them a bit more. Okay, so I've got my first pass thumbnail sketches. They're very rough, very loose. It might be difficult to see what's actually going on here. Uh, I can kind of see it because I drew it, so I know kind of what's happening. But yeah, I'm going to take a few of these, and the plan is to then develop them a bit further. Still thumbnails, but a bit clearer, right? But at this stage, I think I already know what's going to work, what's not going to work. So basically, I'm drawn to this one. Uh, even this one, I think. This one. So, so far, these three are quite similar. This one here. Kind of like this one too. Um, but, I'm going to focus on these, these four at the moment. So the reason I like these is uh, I like the, the dynamics between the group of kids, which is here, and then this ghost or monster or whatever, looking down on them, you know? I want this moment to be scary for the kids. You know, they're meeting this monster or ghost for the first time. So they're scared. They're feeling vulnerable. They're panicking, and I want that to come across. So I want the, the ghost character to be quite dominant in the scene. I think that looking down on them plays well with the kind of power dynamic. This one here is pretty similar to this one, but 
you know, I I think I'm not going to run with this because I feel like these kids have just wandered in the lobby, you know, they've come in the front door, they're in the lobby, and then they're seeing the ghost, right? They've not invested enough in this situation, whereas in this one, I feel like the kids have made an effort. They've come up the stairs, they've committed to exploring this haunted house, and then they meet the, the ghost. So I like that drama. I think there's more to it than this one. This here is pretty much the same idea. It's just a different perspective on it. I, I like the window. Good source of light. Suggesting it's during the day. Could work. You know, it could be during the day they're exploring this haunted house. It might not work. We'll see. But yeah, I like this kind of overall composition. I think... In my head, it was going to be landscape. It would be interesting to explore a vertical portrait scene. Uh, this one too, it's the same idea, but it's from a different perspective. So we're looking up this time. And, you know, there's something good about that. There's, you, you kind of feel like you're part of the group of the kids. And you're, you're in there with them. You're seeing it through their eyes. You're in the chaos with them. And the ghost is looking down on you as well, right? So the only reason I'm not sure about this is, you know, I want the kids, I want to see the kids' expressions, their faces, their body language. So we're losing a lot of that here compared to, say, this one, where you can see everything. Yeah, so they're both quite dynamic, which I like. So just to talk about some of the ones I'm not really looking at. Uh, okay, same idea. On the stairs, ghostly figure. It's just not very dramatic. So actually this image is pretty much the same as this image. But this one's got more drama, a bit more conflict. It feels more energetic. So we can cancel that out. Again, same idea, it's just less dramatic. So let's cut that. Uh, looking in the doorway, seeing the figure here. Th the moment isn't there. They're not face to face with this ghost. I want them to be face to face. Actually, that's another reason why this one doesn't really work for me. They're not close enough. They could just run away. The kids could just run away. I want them to feel close, like in this one. Even this, they're not they're maybe not close enough for the drama. This one here just feels a bit flat, you know? Everything's on the same level, there's no perspective. To really push the drama. Through the legs is kind of cool. It's very dramatic. But in this one the focus is on the character of the ghost rather than the kids. So I feel like everyone's just framing this ghost character. And you're not seeing enough of the children and their reactions and their you know, expressions. Running away from the ghost. It's fine, but I don't feel like there's any of that tension where you're not sure what they're going to do. This feels like the moment after. Yeah, so this feels like... Here we go, one, two, you know what I mean? And I feel this has got the most suspense, because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, These were just a bit, I think, a bit too subtle. They weren't really what I wanted. So, you know... The children are kind of looking around this room, and there's just this subtle kind of ghost sitting in a chair. A bit creepy. Same with this one. Creepy. I just don't feel there's enough drama, which I want. And uh, this one, you know, they're shining a torch, creating this light. And the shadows are kind of, you know, a bit monstrous. Creepy shadows. Again, I don't think it's, it's not really what I'm going for. I want more drama. I don't mind this as a composition, but again, it's it's not exaggerated drama enough for me. I want more... It could be. I mean, it depends what this character is doing. But again, I, I want to see the kids' faces, and I want to feel like they're a bit more, I don't know, up close and personal with this, this ghost. So, just to kind of recap, I'm going to move forward with this one. This one, 
uh, not this one because I want them on the stairs I think I want them a bit closer so not this one uh, this one try that a hey, anything else I thought maybe this one but I feel I, th I like the perspective that kind of looking down uh, yeah it's cool but nice kind of you know leading the eye and stuff but I, I feel like I want to see more of the, the ghost character uh, yeah so I'm going to work forward move forward sorry with one two three and I'm going to think about clarifying them you know make them clearer think about how I'm going to lead the eye through the scene with the the banister and the stairway uh, same here yeah thinking about focal point I'm going to lead the eye thinking about light source is it from this window through this window is it somewhere else yeah I'm going to move forward with those three and think them through a bit clearer and clarify the the thumbnail still rough still loose I'm still not going to get too bogged down in details just a bit more clarity